lot of good things are happening in 25 anymore. Yeah. So a few years ago when we first came to PCB West, the number of people that knew about 2581 was very few. Last two, three years, everybody that comes to our booth knows about 2581 and is interested in the progress of the adoption of 2581. So today, uh, there are many companies that use 2581 to hand off their design to manufacturing. And they have reported that that process is very easy and very efficient for them. Anna? Yes, all of the ECAT tools output 2581. Okay. So that's the great news. Yeah. All the vendors do it. We also have companies that do analysis mm -hmm. that import and export 2581. We have companies that have write PLM software that they import and export 2581. We also have software companies that support the manufacturing space they also import and export 2581. So DFM companies, EDA companies, analysis testing companies, companies, testing companies, all of them support 2581. So majority of the people today, believe it or not, use Gerber's. Right. Right. So so I would I would contrast it to Gerber's. So uh, 80 plus percent, probably 90 plus percent of the of the people today use Gerber's. Gerber is a format that was first conceived in the 1980s. And it has evolved a little bit. You know, 274X has come out and it's gotten better. But it is a photo plot format. It is artwork, essentially. There's no intelligence. There's no intelligence in it. So what 2581 offers is intelligent data. You have intelligent data in your design and there's no need for you to dump it down into artwork to then give it to somebody else that has to re reverse engineer that into intelligent data to then go fabricate the board or assemble the board. So what 2581 offers is an intelligent transport and handoff of design data to manufacturing so that the intelligence is preserved, the relationships between elements that are required to manufacture board are preserved and passed on to manufacturer. ODB++ is also an intelligent format. In fact, 2581 uh, was actually uh, created with the combination of GenCam mm -hmm. and ODB++. Right. ODB++ donated their standard to IPC, okay. and what came out is a better standard, 2581, which is a superset of ODB++ and GenCam. So that's one part. The second part is ODB++ is a proprietary format. So if you're not a customer, uh, maintenance paying customer of ODB++, or their tools, mm -hmm. you are not likely to get the same level of support that you would need that, you know, to, to address your issues if you ran into any issues. So that tells me that it's not the standard. It is a format for a particular company's CAT tool. IPC 2581 is an IPC standard. So proprietary formats come and go over a period of time. A lot of different formats come and go. IPC is an, in, is an institute that is there to create and promote standards or make it more efficient for people to work, right? So it is more likely to survive over a period of time. Second piece is we created IPC 2581 Consortium to do exactly what you're asking for, which is to find ways of improving the format, do it in an open manner, and do it in a collective manner. And what the consortium has is a complete supply chain. It's a PCB design and manufacturing supply chain. So you have OEMs, design houses, you have software vendors, you have manufacturing companies, you have all kinds of companies in there that are coming up with a good standard. And I'll give you an example of what we did as a consortium is something that nobody else did in a very short period of time is to create a version of 2581 that exchanges the stack up in 2581 format. So the only format available today to exchange stack up, stack up is 2581. And this was the invention of the consortium companies and this is an example of how collaboration works beautifully for the benefit of the industry instead of one company. So 2581 has all of the data that you need to manufacture a board. 
So a designer today has to generate the Gerber files, the you know, NC drill file, the netlist file, you know, and all of the different instructions that you have are created in multiple different file formats and they have to be correlated. If an engineer, if a designer was creating an output format, he gets interrupted and he forgets to output a file or he changes the design and doesn't regenerate the files, then the data set sent to the manufacturer will be inconsistent and it will be a designer's fault, right? Sure. So if the designer makes a mistake, so the designer has to pay for it. The designer's company has to pay for it. The same thing when you pass it on to manufacturer, if a manufacturer makes a mistake and reverse engineer that data set, the manufacturer pays for it. And there's no need to do this because you're going from intelligent data in your board to intelligent setup on your manufacturing floor. Why to dumb down that information? There's no need to. Push a button, create an output in 2581, and send it to your manufacturer. If you're wanting to send only fabrication data, 2581 supports that. If you want to send just the assembly data, 2581 supports it. Just the test data, you can do that. So all of the data required for testing is included in the test data. So not just the net list, anything else that's associated with the test pads and test, all of that. All of that's included in They're 25. Defined all it's defined from your design. Mm -hmm. It takes it and puts it in 25. Tool. Whatever your tools, CAD tools support right. for testing instructions and testing data, mm -hmm. that is transferred. It doesn't invent anything new out of that, but it makes it easy for you to transfer the test intent in electronic for form. Example. 2581 is, is a way for you to communicate your intent. So you whatever you have to do in your native tools to create that intent will still exist. And tools will be different. You know, some tools do it easy, some do it difficult. Right? So whatever you do in your creating your design intent or test intent in this case, that same thing will exist but 2581 enables that data to be transferred easily. The netlist data is, is the format. The netlist is yeah, there. netlist is completely there. Variance is there, bill of materials is there. So you have everything to manufacture your board with any variations that you want. Every tool has a different se sequence of steps that they follow to output the data. So we, for, for Cadence, we um, asked the consortium members who've used Allegro to output 2581, we asked them to document it. And it's a simple one page sequence of steps to here are the steps you take to produce 2581. Very simple format. And we went to the, the consortium members because they have done it, it's proven, and they're doing it on a daily basis. What, it's a very interesting um, chemistry there. We are competitors in the field, but when we work in the consortium, we are working towards the same goal of making the design data handoff very smooth and making 2581 the best possible standard out there. Very good collaboration. So that's an interesting question. So 2581 uh, was always intended to go from design data handoff to all the way to the factory floor. And what we are doing is working with the IPC Connected Factory Exchange standard to enable um, the smart factories of tomorrow. And my colleague, Michael Ford, will talk a lot about that and how that's enabled and how 2581 fits into it. 